Joining us now is Charlie Barone, the uh, principal attorney from Barone Law Offices and the senior paralegal, Vicki Stetzer, and they're going to tell us something about estate planning. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for inviting us. So a lot of people have a general understanding of estate planning, or they've heard of it before, but we wanted to have Barone Law Offices come on and talk to us about, starting from the basics, what needs to be done and how important it is to get it done, because I think a lot of people try not to think about passing to the next life and don't want to actually spend the time getting it done and maybe think that it's complicated to do. So let's start with the basics of estate planning and what's involved in that. Well, it's, it's a process for people to, to go down and, and meet with their attorney um, or financial advisor as well, uh, sit down and, and go over their estate. Uh, it's, uh, the purpose of it is to provide for the management of their estate and who receives their property. Um, they get to select it when, you, when you're involved in estate planning. Um, the person who is um, making the plans uh, for his ultimate death um, will specifically select the representative and the heirs. And uh, that would be the most popular um, plan would be a simple will. And what, what does a state usually entail? That's any kind of assets and... Well, yeah, it, it, it involves uh, property of, that is in the name of the, what we call the decedent, who is the person making the will. Um, the person receiving it is the beneficiary uh, or the heirs. And um, it could be real property, such as you know, your home or land. It could be personal property, um, which can be uh, anything from jewelry to furniture to other furnishings, um, bank accounts, money, life insurance policies. Those are the types of uh, assets that would be distributed. And what is the biggest downside, obviously, probably figuring out who gets what or the time involved if you don't have it in place, but what, is, what are some of the downsides of not well, the, the, the main there? The main problems that uh, families encounter uh, when someone dies, a loved one dies, is is that um, there's no plan on how he wanted or she wanted to leave their property. Um, ultimately, um, since if, if you have not planned ahead of time, if not uh, drafted a will for their estate, then the uh, state of North Carolina has a set of rules um, pursuant to the North Carolina Intestate Succession Act, which dictates how and uh, who will be representing the estate as well as who will be receiving the assets of the estate. Um, and typically, and in a lot of cases, that may not be the person that you would have selected had you made, uh, you know, had an estate plan drafted on your behalf. So those are some of the issues that we find, um, the most common issues mm -hmm. that we find. Um, and also, it, it, it allows for the orderly management of his affairs. Um, I like you know, the way it, how you worded it, too, you, on one of the documents. You said it's your legacy. Yes. So it, it kind of leaves that legacy of how you would have wanted things and how you want people to remember you. Exactly, because there can be some heirlooms and personal property. There can be businesses um, and just a number of, uh, of, of special things that you may have done through your lifetime that you want uh, included in your estate plan or your will. And you can leave these things to specific people and, uh, and be remembered that way. Um, legacy is very, very important, especially these days, um, um, because we all have a legacy of some sort and you know, we want to leave something uh, personal from mm -hmm. us behind for, for everybody to remember, and this is a great way to do it. Is the process different for people who have a large estate versus people who don't have a, a large estate to leave? Yeah, and, that, and that's, another, that's a misconception. A lot of people who, who feel they don't have much property. Mm -hmm. Now, they may not have, you know, own a house or, 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 or something of that magnitude, but they do have personal belongings, they have personal property, and they may have some heirlooms and things that they want to leave specifically mm -hmm. to family members, friends, or other um, acquaintances. And um, if you have a smaller estate, it doesn't matter. You should still plan ahead um, rather than allowing the state to choose and pick who gets what. It, it, it doesn't matter. Now with larger estates, there's other issues that come into play such as uh, tax issues. Mm -hmm. um, we may have to plan for that through trusts, uh, living right. trusts, charitable trusts, um, things of that nature which I won't touch on but more complicated. But the larger the estate, obviously the more attention is needed uh, for the estate plan. But nonetheless, this, the person with the smaller estate still needs to plan. But doesn't 
even if you don't have a will in place, doesn't everything automatically go to the spouse? No, that's not true. And in fact, a lot of people have another misconception that if, if they don't have a will, everything goes to the state mm -hmm. um, or goes to the spouse, and that's not necessarily true. Some examples are if we have um, uh, a decedent who has a spouse and uh, no parents and no children, then all the property, if he doesn't have a will, all the property will go to the spouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if we have the decedent who has a spouse and, and one child, um, then the uh, spouse would get the first $30,000 in personal property. Mm -hmm. They would get half of the remainder of the personal property. And then the, ch the child will split or take the other half remaining of the personal Even property. Even if the child's a minor? Yes, even if the child's a minor. Now, since there's one person uh, existing, then that person would probably be uh, in charge of that uh, of those funds um, for for free, future use. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, the if you have a, a you know a person who dies and they have a spouse and more than two or more children, then the spouse, if you don't have a will, then the spouse only takes the first thirty thousand and one third of the remaining personal property. The two-thirds remaining of the personal property after that election is made or distribution goes to the children to divide equally among themselves. And I just I made a mistake with regards to if if um, an individual individual dies with a spouse. Um, many people don't realize this, but it does not go all to the spouse. I apologize for that. The first fifty thousand dollars goes to the spouse. Half of the remaining state goes to the spouse. Half goes to his parents. And it's very important because a lot of people don't know that, that right. now we have the interjection of their parents involved, uh, and this is regulated by the, you know, by the North Carolina in, intestate Is that discussion. just in North Carolina, or is well, that that's, pretty well, general? Well, in most states, there are intestate laws that are similar. Mm -hmm. um, also, if you're a single individual and you have uh, no spouse, no kids, then everything goes to your parents, mm -hmm. or if they're not, uh, if, if they're if they predeceased him, then they would go to the, his siblings. Mm -hmm. So that's typically how it works in, uh, if you do not have a state plan um, through intestate succession.